Hoka, hey, Alita Army, welcome to the Alita live stream of July the 26th, 2024. How the Erm could have won the Battle of Zalem, where we discuss all things to do with the movie Alita Battle Angel, the source manga Gunnam, and the greatly desired sequels. I am your host, the Muscogee Creek or Creek Indian from this week in Linville, North Carolina. Usually it's Denver, Colorado, and it will be Denver, Colorado next week. And uh, with me, I have uh, Lee, and he's from Fountain, Colorado. How's it going, Lee? Oh, hey. Uh, not too bad. Cool. And then there's Mendrick. Uh, he's from uh, Deutschland, and I guess you're up near Frankfurt somewhere, aren't you, Smendrick? I'm not sure. I can't remember. Uh, we have two Frankfurts. I'm oh. closer to the... Not well known Frankfurt. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, then my. Uh, okay, now I'm telling you uh, the the big Frankfurt is my place of birth. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Yeah, but I'm no longer live there. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything yeah. is nice. Hokkaido. Uh, Quicky and hello, hunter warriors out there. Yeah, and Hope you uh, are all fine. You betcha. And we also have uh, with us from the Shires in the Western UK, Vladi. How's it going, Vladi? Good evening. Not too bad. Not too bad. Weather's pretty crap as usual. As the the, pa the Paris Olo Open Olympic opening ceremony got a taste of that today, which is very funny to see. Yeah, we were just talking about that pre-stream about, you know, Lee and I were talking about it. And then Smendrick came on how you were doing a stream and you pause the stream so you all could watch the opening ceremony yeah. of the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Because I, I thought it would be finished way before then, but they drag these things out for hours and hours. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they and do. And then it's like, and then, then we were they were stuck watching this guy give a speech for like half an hour. <laughs> and I just wanted to see the cool light show from the Eiffel Tower. Which was yeah. actually really cool. It was worth it. Yeah, it was. It, it was pretty sick, man. It was great. Well, let's move on then. Now, here's our main topic. The, the main topic here is, if you remember from the movie, and just to kind of set all this up, and then I'm going to play a little video of the Battle of Zalem. Um, if you remember when the, uh, I guess, Hugo and Alita and... Uh, Koyomi and Tanji, they were going to the Erm ship. Uh, Hugo was explaining to Alita, you know, what that whole process was. Because remember, Alita, even though she fought in that war in the movie, she has no memory, so she doesn't she doesn't know it, you know. So he was he was telling her, you know, that there were I think it was twelve uh, cities, uh, sky yeah, twelve. Cities. We even had a stream about how stupid that sounds. There's just way too many orbital elevators. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, every every thirty degrees, you know, around the equator, you got a, you got a sky city. That, like that, that they decided be... twelve. That's a nice number, you know, like twelve yeah. months, twelve apostles, twelve. Mm. You know what? Twelve elevators. Yeah. Well, you know, go what's home it... or go go big or go home. They well, should what... have stayed home. Well, what's significant about twelve is that that means the angular, uh, I guess, orientation around the earth is 30 degrees. So in other words, that it's evenly spaced in 30 degree increments all the way around the earth. Cause it, you know, as you know, a circle has got 360 degrees in it. So if you have 12, you know, that's 30 degrees. So, uh, that's and that, way that's too many nice, though. It is like, it definitely. If they wanted not, to have more than in the manga, like I could have, go, I could have accepted six. Why the hell do you need 12? Well, I would say probably the mo the most you would want is four. <laughs> but, and four you know. is four is a reasonable. Yeah. Two is a, the original number. Four is a reasonable number. Six, a little overboard, but hey, why not? Twelve. Now you're just going stupid. You you you're just trying to prove we have the most elevators yeah. out of yeah. any country, out of, of any planet. Uh, yes, but uh, why? Where did it say that? Was it in? In the book, Where does it keep, in the, it's in, in the, the movie. In the novelization, there's twelve. The novelization, of the, yeah, in the novelization, yeah. Is it's not in the movie though, is it? 
He kind of no. mentioned. He doesn't no. mention the number specifically. Yeah, the novelization said, and the movie aren't fully compatible. Yes. No, there was some license taken. The novelization. Uh, I thought yes. it might have been in that. Uh, that uh, the, you know, the history in, in the special features when they go and not no, just none of that makes sense. I thought it might have been from that. Well, I think the, the book, idea was think... they did. It's kind of like Channel says they kind of came up with a big number, you know, to make it sound like, you know, that Earth is, a, I guess, was maybe a super advanced uh, culture at that point, you know, society, you know, and then it would, if you could put up 12 cities like that, which means you would have to have uh, probably 12 Jerus, <laughs> you know, or some kind of orbital ring like they have, you know, like in the manga, and then they'd have to be hooked to the orbital ring somehow. I, they didn't go into that in the movie too much, you know. But uh, you would have to have it had to be paired like that. And what that would mean is, is if you got twelve, that means you really got twenty-four. Because if you remember, we had we've had a couple of streams on this about the physics of this. Is that you know Jeru is an example is in geosynchronous orbit above the Earth, and uh, <clears throat> and and Zalem is like two, mi two miles above the surface of the Earth. Now I got to ask, yes. is, it, is it 12 as in 12 counting both the bottom and the top city or 12 counting the amount of elevators? Because every elevator... Has yeah, I, I don't know. They don't go into that, do they? So Because if it's yeah. 12 elevators, then that gives us 24 cities. But yeah. if it's 12 cities, then that only gives us six elevators. So we're back yeah. to a less stupid number. Yeah, that's right. But they don't really go into that, do they? Uh, we don't really know, you know. So, uh, Until yeah, they I, explain, I, I'm hoping it's 12 cities and six elevators because that sounds significantly less stupid. Yeah, and it, and it, and it would take a tremendous investment to build. Well, it would take a big investment to build, you know, six of these things, six pairs. I disagree well, with that. Oh, okay. Go for it. Uh, once you've got the technology and materials to build one, you're going to have it a uh, much easier time of building any more after that because you're already in a position to easily do it. I mean, you're I not in a position to, to easily do it, yeah. but you are in a position to do it. So now you're improving on a method that you already know at least kind of works. Yeah, well, I'm still going to have to disagree with that. According to the aerospace engineers at NASA that have been working on these projects, once you get one out of the way, the rest are easy. Well, they're to, easy, but I, I don't remember which space agency, but uh, they said on the news in 2021 that by 2025 we would have a space, uh, we, we would have a permanent uh, space station. I don't remember if it was yeah. on the moon or on the Mars. I think it was going to be the Mars landing. Uh, uh, we're we not don't. quite Why there yet. 2025 have a having a colony on Mars. That's that sounds pretty uh, aggressive to me. We, I don't know if we've got the technology for that yet. Yeah, but, that that yeah. kind of sounded far fetched in that then, and it sounds even worse now. So now I would say say 2030 might be re more reasonable. You well, know. that's the thing. It's not a technology problem that we yeah. have. It's a politics problem. Yeah, yeah the, exactly. You know, economies, look, yeah, economies look at the, too, right? Look at the current mm. thing with the uh, moon. Every single nation or, uh, or um, uh, unity or I don't know how to uh, say this, um, tries to start a kind of competition. Yeah. To the well, others. Kind of like so, it was in the 60s, right? With the moon. The yeah. Moon yeah. yeah exactly. And look yeah. Na look at now um, the, the run to the moon. Uh, the, Japan uh, tries to, for the second time, yeah, within a, a too, very right? short period uh, to, to explore the moon, the yeah. backside of the moon and whatever. What's this for? You can ask this, yeah, but you cannot change this politics. We need to mine that sucker. Well, yeah. here, here's the thing, though, and Lee. What's it, on it, the moon that's so mineable, though? Because helium, helium. Helium. Okay. Have you yeah, seen, helium. Have that you is seen very moon? useful. Yeah. But, but for but the Lee, planet, that... okay, moon's not a planet, but you know, for the space bodies that aren't as well explored, 
we don't really with Moon, we know helium with the other ones we don't really know how much of them has useful mineable materials like there's definitely something we have no idea what and yeah, how much it's of only it is this, useful to us. the entire thing is only for the competition being the best being better than other nations I that's mean, that's all. why the space race happened at all, to prove uh, we're uh, mostly between the U.S. and the uh, uh, USSR to prove w who's better, like who can get yeah, to yeah. space. Yeah, it's or... crazy. It's yeah. absolutely crazy, but we it's cannot not change like that now. It, well, it, well, it can't. It's not going to be like that now in a nation. I mean, certainly nations will, but it's also going to be commercial entities doing this. But, Lee, I want to go back to something Lee said a while ago that I agree that in the economies of scale, if you do more and more things, it's not as difficult, but it would still take more investment to do 12 floating cities than to do one, you know, although it won't take 12 times as much, might take three times as much, you know, maybe. Well, the materials you know. to build them are already out there. We don't need That's to use true. any of the stuff on Earth. But you still. And we've you, got uh, technology right now that could get us to Mars and back yes. in a matter of weeks. They just yeah, don't want yeah. to use it. Yeah, that's Because right. there's all this political red tape and other BS that's in the way of using it. Yeah. Okay. The but it would still, it would still, it would still take more investment, though, to do multiple yeah, cities. It, it wouldn't also, be as much. Wouldn't maybe be as this. Much. Maybe the advantage could be if you try it other than the others um you can share the experience yeah and if you have 12 tries for example um maybe the half maybe six fails but um you can learn from the other things yeah that's right and you I have to remember might... the the space elevators because they're counterbalancing each other, you have to yeah. build the two on the opposite sides at the same time. Actually, yeah. you don't. You don't? No. no. According no. to the, uh, again, according to the people who actually work on this stuff, once you get one spe uh, space elevator balanced in a geosynchronous orbit, yeah, it stays there on its own. down, right, Lee? Yeah. So you, it's just the yeah. ring that has to be, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah that makes, I mean, that's yeah. the thing. You would still, you still might want multiples yeah. Out of consideration for military power. I mean, if you are in a or just for... uh, arms race with other planets and colonies, yeah. then you might need to uh, or feel the need to build all these other facilities out there as shipyards, repair facilities, and for defense. Well, for redundancy. I was thinking redundancy for too, trade, yeah. but for there trade is that as well. So we yes. don't end up with a space version of what okay. happened with the yeah. uh, canal that got blocked by a sideways ship. Yeah, exactly. Well, to Lee's point too is that uh, if you had, if I you understand had, just... why there would be multiple, but twelve is just you technically could build. We absolutely have the technology to build ten airports around one city, but there's no city that has ten airports. Like really, some cities have five, but I don't. There's is there a city on Earth that has ten airports? We have the technology to do it. Well, I know around Denver they got more than one airport. They got. Yeah, like I uh, say, there's got, some cities with five, uh, least, up to five airports, but got at you least don't four need that I know of. <laughs> so, but anyway, to to Lee's point, one of the things I uh, the, uh, when he brought up the military part of it, one of the things that you want if if you want to have a uh, an advanced civilization that has needs to protect itself against other you know against enemies, interstellar or inter or planetary enemies. By having multiple cities like that, your your culture, your society is more resilient because you take out one city, there's still some others. You know, I mean, if you only have one city and you take it out, then you've destroyed, you know, pretty much the uh, a good part of the society, you know, that's maybe dependent on various things from the city, you know. Now, whether it's 12 or not, you know, I, I think in the movie it is 12, but, uh, you know, we could argue all day about that. I, I do tend to agree with you, Channel, that 12 is kind of a big number. You know, I don't think it would cost 12 times as much to, to put up 12 as it would one. You know, it's not one times 12, but 
but it would still be a, a somewhat of a considerable event, uh, uh, investment. But what would be the re the reward for it? Well, you'd have this resiliency or redu redundancy against uh, you know kind of uh, planetary enemies or something like that. Because if you remember in Alita, you got the people on uh, Jupiter. There are people on Mars, or there was. Uh, and people that are uh, in the floating cities around Venus. So, you know, there's three potential enemies right there, you know. Uh, anyway. Also, I wanna... if, you, if you're going, uh, you're probably, if you have this many, you're probably going to want to use separate elevators for military purposes and separate for trade purposes, assuming you both have, uh, both are happening at the same time. It's not like the planets aren't completely cut off from each other trade-wise. Yeah. If there you you would probably be using different elevator for commerce and a different for military actions. Perhaps you, you could, but you could probably do some of that because right now, you know, military they they buy materials from the private sector. I mean, it's not uh, they absolutely you know, do. Yeah. So what I'm but how but transporting it about, in, in that uh, kind of a in that kind of advanced civilization, yeah, who knows? You know, I mean I'm uh, talking more about how shipments from uh, from factories don't really arrive to military usually arrive to military ports. Yeah, yeah, they don't. That's right because you have shipyards and military yeah, airports ship and shipments stuff like that. from a, yeah, uh, from exactly. a work a closed workshop in China don't end up in uh, don't come in from yeah military ports. Uh, okay, I want to bring this back to the Battle of Zalem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is really good discussion, and maybe this is something for another stream. Uh, you, you would be a great idea on this. But uh, in terms of the Battle of Zalem itself, if you remember from the movie, Hugo said that Zalem was the last city, was the only surviving city uh, after the Great War with Mars, the United Republics of Mars. Now, that's a that's a movie-only thing. In the manga, it's, there is no United Republics of Mars in the manga. But in the movie, of course, there is. So Earth and, and Mars had this big war with each other. And although it kind of seems like the war was a stalemate or maybe a draw. There's still beeping. There's beeping in the background. Someone's someone's got something beeping. Uh, let's see. Let me. I'm gonna mute my mic. Oh, is it my uh, me? Wait, wait, wait. We had this uh, time ago. I um, tell me, channel, if it's gone. Yes. Ah, Smendrick, you're using that. Bring you used to use Smendrick. <laughs> Man, but I have. That's all right. Smendrick, I can't. I can't hear the beeping myself. So. Uh, like it's kind of quiet and very high pitched, but it's definitely audible. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, but I, I, I didn't connect it to the, to this port. Because mm, it used to happen, then you fixed it, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you did fix it, didn't you? Yeah, and and uh, since then I didn't change anything. Yeah. Oh, man. oh well, we'll, we'll we'll don't worry about it, Smendrick. We we'll live with it. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I, I want to get back to the Battle of Zalem here. Now, if you remember the Battle of Zalem, if just from the movie. Now we don't have a lot on this, but based on the movie, remember there was two ba two battles that we saw in the movie. There was the battle on Mars. I mean, on the moon, rather, not Mars, on the moon. And I got this distinct impression that the Erm won that battle, okay? And we had a stream on this here about three or four months ago. But the Battle of Zalem, you know, and if there were 12 cities, that means there were 12 battles, you know. Uh, the Erm won 11 of those battles, but they lost the Battle of Zalem. Now, the overall war, I think, was pretty much a... Uh, was you know, pretty much a draw, I think. I think it those, may have been mutual destruction. Yeah, I think so, you know. Oh, we lost Smendrick. Wow. Uh, but he's anyway... Uh, fix his yeah, he's probably fixing his uh, mic. But anyway, uh, I'm going to play this little video. It's from the movie, and uh, I, we're not going to get yeeted because I've already checked it out. So uh, anyway, here, uh, you guys will all uh, recognize this. Oh, so epic. Yes. 
The cinematography now with the money has uh, Amazing, isn't it? Squish like a bottle. Magically appearing Galdo in three, two, one. Yeah. I was a bit ahead of time now. Now you got the idea there. You see now that the supply tube certainly was destroyed, but you know, based on all of those berserkers getting wiped out, except for Gelda and Alita. Now, if you remember about uh, uh, berserkers, they were such powerful soldiers that probably Gelda and Alita probably had it within their capability to do some uh, inflict some serious damage. You know, probably dissolve them. Definitely. I'm sorry. Sorry. No. What? What was that? Is it probably like it's pretty much definitely. Yeah. Because like, even if they couldn't from the outside, if it was very well enforced, once they got inside, there is no way the entire city is made is uh, berserker proofed. Like maybe yeah, the exactly. outside is berserker proof, but like once you get into the actual servers uh, or the residential areas, there's no way everything there is berserker proofed. In fact, well, most stuff isn't. Yeah, well, if you remember what Ito said about Alita, you know, that she was the most advanced cyborg weapon ever created. And, yep. you know, those those berserkers, they, they're superhuman. You know, I mean, they're going to, mm -hmm. the regular soldiers aren't going to stand a chance against them. You know, yeah, I mean, you get a powerful weapon system like that inside a uh, enemy facility. There's going to be a lot of soft bits in there. They're going to be able to do some serious harm. And even, even if there are soldiers in there, uh, there's Smendrick, Keith. Mendrick's back with us. Did you fix your mic? Okay. Uh, um, I I removed the the extension cable. Um, please, channel. Um, check. There's it. no beeping now. Nice. Okay. Okay. You fixed, no beeping. you fixed it. You fixed it. But anyway, looking at that video. Looks like the Erm lost that battle, didn't they? I mean, it kind of feels like they did. Now we don't, you know, we don't know what happened with Alita. Now we do know Alita certainly ended up in the scrap pile. We don't know what happened to Gelda, you know. So, you know, probably it'd be my what I think is that they were captured. They may have gotten into Zalem and created havoc and maybe, you know, taken out a whole bunch of different soldiers and caused a lot of destruction. But eventually they were captured, and then of course the leader was thrown over the side. God ah, damn it! Sorry about that, my damn was phone. It me? Was Poten it potential, potential spam, you think? <laughs> Rosa calling to say, "Yeah, I'll take the bus. I'm yeah. I'll meet you after the show." I thought I muted the damn thing too. Jeez. But anyway, that's not the story on my phone. Um, what a boring ringtone. Yes. <laughs> Should be like one song or something. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, I, I think that Erm the Erm lost that battle. And particularly since Zalem is still in the sky. Yeah. Really I mean, since their objective was to bring the city down, they didn't. It and seems, they didn't. You know, yeah. Yeah. Now the they other uh, the other eleven cities came down, obviously, you know, but uh this one didn't, you know, so they lost that battle. Uh now. That was the way they approached it. You remember they had the squad going up the supply tube. Okay. Uh, that looked like to me almost like a frontal assault, you know, which is a lot of times not a good thing to do for soldiers, you know, because, uh, uh, it, and I kind of got the impression maybe that their intel, you know, for Zalem may not have been that good. Maybe they didn't know that there was a defense ring or if they did, Maybe they underestimated its ability. Or they to, just didn't prepare properly for it. Yeah, they didn't prepare for it. Yeah. Now, that one berserker yelled defense ring, so they knew what it was, obviously. But, yeah, they, yeah. they, didn't, uh, they didn't know how to handle it. Now, what does that mean? Well, what it means is, is there were some other ways that they probably could have approached this 
uh, that would have been less lethal to the berserkers. I mean, can you imagine that there was a squad there uh, and I, it was probably a dozen berserkers, I guess, you know, at least if, if it's a dozen. And that may not have been the only have... assault squad going up those tubes and yeah. multiple tubes. They could have. That's right. Well, yeah, the other tubes, you know, were different. I'm just talking about this one tube. Yeah. They probably they could have even had more than one squad going up that tube, you know, at, at some mm -hmm. point. But now when the tube got cut in half by them shooting at it, you know, the way they did with those plasma weapons. Well, it you know. wasn't the uh, weapons fire that did. They, when they uh, smashed the ring and it flew apart, it acted like a buzzsaw cutting through the uh, tube. Well, I mean, I think the ring, though, got destroyed by the plasma weapons, not not the two. Oh, yeah, yeah. the ring. Yeah. The ring did, yeah. The ring, the ring was taken out by the plasma weapons. Now, and the ring just, like, destroyed the tube. Yes. As yeah, the ring blew apart. Yeah, the ring it cut it in half. Yeah, after they after they shot the crap out of it. Not know. a very strong tube. If that, if the defense ring is what breaks it, that might actually be why they went up. They were expecting that uh, the fragility of the tube would have prevented, would have um, meant that the defenders may not have they been willing risk to mm, risk it. Yeah. Never thought yeah. of that. Because they got their supplies from it, didn't they? <laughs> from that, up those. Yeah. It seemed like the primary method of getting supplies. Yeah, I mean, at yeah, this point, sure. I'm not sure if they were still. Actually, no. At this point, the plagues may have already been released on Earth, so it could be that Zalem had, at this point, cut its physical connection directly beneath it, yeah, in order mm -hmm. to prevent the plagues from reaching uh, Zalem. So it yeah. might be that, yeah, the tubes were the only way to get in there. Yeah. Well, I kind of thought though how the arm could have approached this differently and what they could win, you know? Yeah. Uh, and of course, one of you see is that the berserkers themselves take a more evasive type of action. And I'm going to show you a video on, not a video, but a, a, an image of that. Uh, certainly one of the other things they could have done was instead of just doing an all out assault on these cities, they could have just destroyed all the defense rings. And they would have starved them out if they had done that, you know. Now that would have been a longer that would have been a longer term engagement, you know. What I mean, like it'd be like oh, a an siege. extended siege like that, yeah, type thing. But they wouldn't be getting food, would they? <laughs> so nope. eventually, they would be in big trouble, you know. And of course, just destroying the supply tube that would uh... it could be there might have been defenses higher up in orbit that they were keeping occupied otherwise, and so they didn't could have be. a lot of time because that. Uh, yeah. diversion may not have been lasting long yeah and we don't have enough data do we uh from the movie yeah. about how that was yeah, now, that's what I, got... I was mentioning before we don't really know what the defenders had to throw at them yeah to really get a good balance of what was going on there now that defense destroying the defense rings themselves because i am i i believe although it doesn't say this in the movie but it might what I think, if you if you base this on what's in the manga or, or in the uh, anime, they probably had more than one defense ring, you know, yeah. on each supply tube. They, they could I was have just them, thinking uh, maybe an anti tank weapon or something like that deployed. Well, that's squad. what I was going to bring up. They might have, if they'd have had some kind of rocket launchers or something like that, because all of these berserkers only had plasma rifles. But you again, know. if you destroy the uh, rings, and they're probably going to do exactly what this one did, which was whip yeah. saw through the. Uh, Rain or a supply tube, and unless cut it down. for some reason they could blow the ring to bits, not just cut it in half, like they or you know, kind of just break so it like break it into small enough pieces that would just Where, fall apart, yeah, exactly. And that would take, like you were saying, Lee, that would take some kind of what we would what we think of in the military today as anti tank weapons, yeah, you know, so that would use the that heavy be, armor, yeah, exactly, you know. Uh, so, you know, but that's one way they could have done it. And I, I did come up with a couple more after this, too. I, I'll get to that. Now, another thing, and we don't know that they didn't do this also, but they could have also just directly attacked the space elevator. Mm -hmm. Because if they can if they can cut that sucker in half, you remember in the manga, that was what the barjack wanted to do when they had that big-ass cannon, yeah. you know? And they that might be what was preventing them from doing it. It was some kind of a shield system along that space be, elevator. yeah. But it seems to me that, you know, an advanced uh, and, you know, an advanced military like this, like the Erm was here in this one, is, yeah, they, they might have had some shield 
uh, system to protect it. But, you know, they could, could keep bombarding that shield until it finally just ran out of uh, energy, you know, and then, mm -hmm. and then, of course, and then just, you know, start attacking, uh, you know, the actual material, you know, that the... Uh, Unless it was being of, filled by... Uh, filled uh fed by a powerful reactor sure. up in uh, space or as could from be, jeru uh, as it's called yeah and that could be they were trying to hit a soft spot where the defenses were weakest which was towards closest to earth surface yes Zalem's, yeah, we, yeah, isn't Zalem powered by uh, thermal energy from what they they used to get it from the shafts connect them to the surface how they're are they getting it now or are really? all the like I say, it could be some sort of reactors in uh, orbit that are feeding yeah. at that point. Could be, or they could even be getting some kind of solar energy or something. Who knows? That's the other thing. It turns out that uh, you can get uh, antimatter from the Van Allen belts. Yeah. Very tiny amounts of it. So it yeah. could be that the there's an antimatter reactor on Jeru that is constantly being fed by the Van Allen belts. Could be. Yeah, we we don't know. You at know, the end, yeah. towards the end of the manga, when the when Zalem falls. We uh, we get a brief mention that the power is restored to the surface from Zalem's power plant, meaning Zalem had its own power plant. Oh, undoubtedly. Yeah, it could be there's a more powerful one up in space too. Yeah, like, and they, what's they probably Zalem's power plant running on. Well, they probably had them cross connected in such a way where they could have some redundancy. Where if you take out one power plant, the other one maybe some others kick in, you know, like generators do today, you know, I mean, maybe they, who knows what they had there, you know, but my thought was, is if they could take out the space elevator, if they could break that sucker in half, uh, then Zolub's coming down. Now it's going to come down on top of iron cities, what it's going to do, you know, but it's coming down. And it uh, could be that there's some sort of an energy field that was connected between Jiro and Zolub. And Could so they be. were trying to uh, break the connection so that it would uh, bring that shield down, which yeah. would allow them to directly attack the space elevator. And it could be that that's one of the things that the, the berserkers were wanting to do. They wanted to get into Zalem and get to that uh, reactor so they could shut it down. Yeah. You know, that could have been something else they were doing. We don't we don't know what they actually we know the mission was to destroy Zalem, but we don't know the specifics, you know, of how the, the tactics or how they were going to accomplish that mission. You know, we just don't know, you know. Uh, another thought I had that uh, didn't occur to me when I was making this, uh, when I was putting together this uh, presentation, was if they had some kind of weapon that could emit a very high energy EMP, mm -hmm. uh, that would take out all the systems, you know, I mean, that, that were actually in operation, you know, because if they... If they had a if they had a weapon like that, and let's say the people, the Earth Defense Force, you know, knew that they had this weapon, then they 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 might be inclined to shut down all of the systems for fear of them using this EMP weapon against them. And when that happened, if they shut down the systems, that might take down the energy shield in which they could then attack the space elevator. But once again, we just don't know, you know, cause they don't go yeah. into it, that kind of thing in the movie at all. You know, uh, uh, sky Sita. I mean, uh, if you want, yeah, I think you said a while ago, you had some thoughts on this. If you want to come on the stream, uh, let me I'm going to copy the link to her, uh, to their, uh, their post and you can just read it. Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, but I, I think uh, this uh, Sky Sky Sita. I, I hope I'm not pronouncing that wrong. Uh, you can click on that link that you see right there in the chat, and I'll bring you in the stream. Uh, and uh, small read, okay. Oh, okay. yeah. I'll just paste the thing in anyway. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, uh, uh, Sky, if you want to come on, you can. You know, anybody can click on the link and I'll bring you in, you know. So, uh, but basically, those are the kind of the, there's four ways up there. And I added the EMP weapon after I had already uploaded, the, <laughs> uploaded the, the presentation. Now, what does that mean? Well, in terms of the evasive action to be taken by the berserkers, if you remember when Hugo died, 
that the fence ring came down. Hugo almost made it over the ring. Now he's not as strong as Alita, but look how high Alita has jumped above, you know, those spikes that are in that defense ring. Now, my my inclination is is that Alita and Gelda were probably the best berserkers. You know, maybe they had the more capable bodies, but I can't believe that the other berserkers bodies were still not capable of jumping over these rings like this. So instead of like what happened in the battle, they might have been caught off guard or something like that, where that ring was on top of them, you know, and then they started shooting at it out of, uh, of, you know, instinct or something like that. If they would have just run at the ring and jumped over it like Alita did right there, that defense ring wouldn't have done anything. You know, and they would have probably launched another one, but they'd have jumped over that, you know. So they just keep jumping over these rings, you know, until they run out of rings. And then they get up into Zalem and uh, a dozen or more berserkers in Zalem. That's going to be the end of the battle right there, because uh, I don't care if they have a hundred soldiers or a thousand, a dozen berserkers are going to take them out, you know, and then they're going to they're going to destroy the infrastructure and everything in Zalem, you know, itself. So. Uh, anyway, what what's y'all's thoughts about this? Uh, I've also pasted the link to the Tumblr. Oh, okay. Let me. We uh, can go through their their um, case for it. Okay, it's, it's interesting analysis. Okay, I'm just reading. I haven't read it all yet. Let me, let me put that in there. I'm gonna put the Tumblr link in the private in the public <laughs> chat. Public just chat. scroll down to the final image on the post. Yeah, I got a bit confused. There, there it is. Need to read so, the rest. <clears throat> anyway, that's my thought. One of the things that those berserkers could have done was could just kept jumping over the rings. They all had oh. this ability. Alita jumped over the ring with ease. Look how high above that thing she is. You know. <laughs> so, what do you guys think? Is that would that be a plausible way to overcome the defense ring? I would think, unless there were some sort of. Uh mitigating circumstances about that like uh somebody f- uh mentioned Batman mentioned alita was not wearing full combat armor here so depending on how dense that armor was yeah. that they were wearing yeah that's right yeah we here's don't know that question. either <laughs> yeah. here's a question was she not wearing it for any actual reason or is it just so we can recognize her because let's be honest if she was wearing ba- uh, full armor with the helmet it, it would not be as easily, the scene would not be as readable as a cinema. And a rule of movie making and generally storytelling is that sometimes being clearly readable is more important than realism. Mm. Well, she has plot armor. <laughs> also, behind the, watching behind the eyes is great. Go read her. Yeah, take. yeah. Yeah. yeah, you should bring it up, Creaky, and we'll, we can go through it. You want me to bring it's up the? Go, it's uh, going to the theory of what if Zal? It's going to the theory, or not that the Nova was originally from Earth and betrayed them to side with Earth. Because why the, did Zalem uh, survive and all the other ones go down? We don't really know. At that point. Yeah, well, we don't. That's that's another thing. Let me let me share the. But it shows that the uh, the Earth had a good strategy because they killed all of them except for one. Yeah, I'm not going to share the audio just in case. So, can you guys see that? There's no audio anyway. Yeah. Oh, there isn't. Well, all right. No, it's, it's just, just the, the text post with pictures. You can literally just scroll down and read it. Okay. Can you sm- close the pop up? It's covering a chunk of the screen. He needs a Tumblr right. account. Uh, to I don't it. have a Tumblr account. Um, and I can't I'm pretty sure there's it. a way to close the top pop up anyway. Okay. Uh, let's so see, see across. <laughs> I, I don't see a little X in the corner. Damn it! Why is okay, that? Okay, grab. Just scroll down then. Just scroll down. Yeah, Install we can. Install the pop up blocker. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, looks like somebody is following us on Tumblr. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we don't really know how they lost. That's that's a good point right there. We, we do have a pretty good feeling that they probably did lose <laughs> because, they, mm. you know, Zalem was still up there and Alita was in pieces 
and we don't know and there is no gelda yeah their but, uh, but whole thing right. seemed to be bring down the city and kill nova and well neither yeah. of those things happen so. none, of, none of those things happen so yeah so yeah but the, but they are right we don't know how the arm lost uh the battle you know we don't know that yeah uh, what they had factors a good... played into that or anything like that yeah and uh, they had a good overall strategy. Well, you know, that that's a good point because, you know, uh, and they mentioned 12 Sky Cities here. Uh, if you bring down 11 cities out of 12, I would say that's uh, overall from a from an overall strategy. That's a, that's a successful strategy. <laughs> if you brought down all but one, you know, then I, I think you've uh, you've met your, most of your objective at the very least. You know, hmm. uh, we don't know what circumstances other than what we saw just a little bit in the movie there that, you know, on the video, how they how they lost. We just don't know. I mean, they got a good point there. Um, <clears throat> and they were right. Looks like that the Sky Cities, if all 11, if 11 out of 12 of them came down, they weren't that well prepared, were they for it? And it could be that just maybe Zalem got lucky. <laughs> And you know, and won that battle, just that single battle. So, uh, yeah. So these are some good points right here. Who, who, who? Did that? guy. Watching, watcher, watching behind the eyes. Yeah, nice. Keep scrolling. There's loads Maybe. more info. Okay, Mars attack. Did the other cities forward. weren't as prepared to deal with the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. So like they, all the other ones were weaker, and they didn't have Nova leading them. Nova yeah. is just. An evil genius. Nova got too much plot armor. Yeah. Yeah, to... yeah, that's right. Nova got to... Nova re... <laughs> found, found an exploit to expand his plot armor to the whole city. Yeah. That's exactly. how they that's how they survived. He has to survive to at least the third movie. And it could be too, it's maybe no maybe it was nothing special about Nova, you know, helping uh, Zalem survive or, or win that particular battle in that they just might have won it, they might have just got lucky. You know, I mean, you know, it could be. We just don't know. You know, we don't know how that how that worked out. So anyway, stand up from other sky cities. Yeah, we don't know that. Uh, he would have been in charge of the during the war. All the others got fallen to Zombo. Oh, uh, interesting. Uh, yeah. No, but according to the novelization, Nova came from the same place as Alita. Yeah. Yeah, in the novelization, he, she was watching him train or watching her train. Mm. Yeah. He was watching her train. So he yeah. must have had inside info. So he knew it. So much we don't know. We need all the. That might have been one of the reasons oh, yeah. they yeah. wanted him dead is because he was a defect a defector from mm. the uh, Martian republics. But exactly. if he was a if he was a defector, that would explain because he already knows the strategy that brought down the other cities, so he'd be able to prepare for it. Or he might have just been such a genius and a major pain in the ass that they felt like they had to get him. <laughs> 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 I feel like if he had, he was da he was dangerous, and he because he knew something about the strategy that he knew how to prepare for it, and none of the other cities without intel about how uh, something about the berserker works would have been able to prepare for it. Yeah, because if Nova in this version going by, uh, is it was in any way uh, involved in the creation of the berserker, he yeah. would have been aware of any uh, loop. In, Loopholes, yes. how to defeat it, how do yeah. I loophole shortcomings you know, of any specific uh, weak points that could potentially defeat it. Yes. Something which, if it's very specific, then a random en uh, enemy scientist would not have been able to figure out because berserkers are so hard to capture and study, they destroy everything. But yeah. the man who created them would know what potentially could stop them. Yes. At least you have a better chance of knowing. Yeah. Well, he there's a good point right here on that very first sentence on this page, is that you know that that like he says here, he or she, the uh, arm was hell bent on killing him, which she, means yeah, he, he was a high value uh, asset to the war. I mean for sure, you know. I mean he was uh, maybe his maybe he did have a major role in Zalem's victory. Maybe the other sky cities did not have a Nova like they were saying there, you know. Uh, that's that's a good point right there, you know. Uh, they, they specifically trained the people to eliminate him, but it still wasn't enough. Yeah, that's right. 
Well, it certainly wasn't enough because the Zalem's still up there. So <laughs> that definitely wasn't enough. Biggest um, biggest mistake was the, was made the way before the Battle of Zalem. Okay. Uh, according to the official novelization, Nova came from the same place. This is what you were alluding to, Channel, as Alita. He belonged to the Erm's elite and observed Alita's training, just like you were saying. So the only mistake of the Erm was uh, we can be sure uh, that we can be sure of was that they didn't prevent Nova's betrayal. Okay, so uh, he it, yeah he came from the same place of, as Alita, and you know he you know is no longer supporting the Erm or anything like that. Now he's on Earth's side. And they did not stop that from happening. So that, that's a good point as well. Wow, this guy knows what he's talking. This person knows what they're talking about. Yeah, really great posts on Reddit. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, we don't know, however, if it was if it was strategic genius, special tech, knowledge of arms secrets. Yeah, we don't know any of that. That's right. Or combination of all those. Nova saving Zalem from getting destroyed, but they should, they, let me uh, just highlight this, uh, but they shouldn't have let him gain so much power in their society. Uh, shouldn't have let him flee to earth and turn against them. Yeah, that that's right. Now we don't know what the circumstance there is, how he did that. Uh, maybe he had a really super great plan for getting away from Mars or getting away from the Urm, you know? Uh, so we don't know. They didn't put Noah in a baby jail while he was still on Venus or on Mars, rather. Yep, gay baby jail. Love it. Okay, so yeah, that's a really good post right there. That that's insightful, I think. Um, yeah, it doesn't still speak specifically though to how the Erm could have changed their tactics, not the strategy. Their overall strategy was successful. They brought down 11 out of 12 of those cities. It's hard to figure out how to, they should have changed their tactics when we have no idea what the tactic actually was. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's true. That That's true, you know. But I, I would think just looking at it with what limited knowledge we have now is that... Uh, we do know that there are some things like, for instance, now we don't, it's kind of like Lee was saying a while ago, we don't know how much that combat armor weighed, you know, so we don't really know if the, the berserkers would have been able to, to leap that high, but look how high she's up there. God, well, somebody I, I also, like, it was, uh, was the bad man again. He uh, pointed out that the more vertically the uh, supply tubes get as you get closer to the city. Yeah it becomes much, much more difficult to jump over them. Well, and not only that, over the, uh, the defense tube ring. is still relatively horizontal up here. They seem to be way higher. Yeah, that's higher. true, yeah. So it's well, harder I, to jump. Well, I have no doubt that the berserkers were strong enough to even get up that vertical tube. The problem is, is that as they got up closer to Zalem and they had multiple defense rings, the mm -hmm. amount of time for them to react for that to come down on them become it's, shorter yeah it's shorter and shorter and shorter and the closer they get they're not going to be able to jump over it if it's vertical you know? that's so, what i was that's what he was saying yeah yeah so anyway the good points can we use ai to make like flash games yet we, we should make one where you just have Alita just jumping up to Zalem, like boing boing over all the supply <laughs> you, over all you, the defense you don't need down. the chat dpt to do a flash game <laughs> No, sorry, I just use that for everything. <laughs> Going super. I mean, Mario you, you, if you definitely, you can definitely find some kind of artist coder who will uh, any commission a flash game. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Sorry. Well, another thing they possibly could have done to take evasive action is they could have had, I don't know, some kind of jet packs of sorts. Although I do think uh, Zalem's air yeah. defense system would shoot them down, probably. So who knows? Yeah. Yeah, this maybe not is going to be as good. I mean, it would be okay in the short run as they're going up the tube, but as they started going up more vertical, it'd be harder for them to mm -hmm. evade that uh, that defense ring, because probably what would happen is Nova would hold maybe 
a couple of rings back until they got right up on it. And then he would let one of them go and it would take out the rest of them because they couldn't jump over it, you know. <laughs> plan C. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, plan that would be a plan C, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I actually kind of got the impression that this was, well, it was pretty much the end of the war at this point. So they were pretty desperate to do something to... Yeah. Bring them down. So, yeah. Well, the idea, too, that they did bring down the other 11, what did they, no, we don't know this either. What did they do on those other 11 cities that maybe they didn't do here? You know, I mean, for whatever be... reason, they may have expended more of their forces on them, perhaps as some kind of uh, operation that decoyed uh, or yeah. drew attention of the urm to those other cities thinking that they were more important targets first. Yeah, it could be. Possibly. Yeah. yeah, could be. Again, it's supposition, but Yeah. So I don't know now that I've got that up there. I'm not so sure this is I mean it's viable to a point, but once you get close to the zolom itself when the tube becomes more vertical, it's going to be hard to get around it. If now what's also make, If someone does make that flash game, then that could be just that could be used as like difficulty because a lot of games, the longer you play, the harder it gets and you don't get bored. So yeah. that's a natural explanation for the difficulty. The tube's getting more uh, vertical. Yeah, yeah, the closer exactly. you're getting, the faster they come. Yes. Yeah. Someone should and, make that game. Yeah, there could be a funny end as well where you where Alita like cuts off Nova's head or something. <laughs> I was just thinking too, they've from what I saw, they had artificial gravity control systems and things. There might have been some kind of gravity control mechanism either in the rings or in the tube itself that made yeah. it much more difficult to get any kind of uh, distance and jumping. That for whatever yeah. reason, Nova didn't use it when it was just Alita and Hugo. Could be. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I'm not. Well, here's the thing. This evasive action thing here maybe could have worked if they had, uh, let me go back a slide, where we talk about destroying the defense rings, in other words, blowing them to bits. Well, let me go ahead and do that. <laughs> blowing them to bits so they, they would not, you know, take out the ring itself, I mean, take out the supply tube itself so they could jump over a few of these. And as they got close, you know, then they could start shooting at the rings before they got released and blowing this, blowing them to smithereens, maybe, mm. you know, and that way they, they wouldn't have a ring once they got up near the vertical. That That's possible. But Taking out again, the launch mechanism or something like that. Yeah. But once again, we don't know that either. We don't know how many rings they had. I mean, they could have had like two dozen of those things and that would have been, that would have been damn near impossible, I think. So. Mm. But yeah, if they had like what we would consider anti-tank weapons or something with, uh, you know, what we would call armor pier piercing incendiary rounds, although they had uh, in the uh, in the rocket launchers, if they had something like that or some kind of, uh, you know, armor piercing. They probably piercing wouldn't weapon. want to use something explosive because then you get shrapnel ripping into the tube that you're climbing up. That's true. Yeah, like they would have. Some kind of uh, yeah. beam weapon or something like that that would cut through a heavy armor like very fast intervals yeah mm -hmm. well all we saw was those uh plasma gun uh, plasma rifles we didn't see any beam weapons i mean that yeah. would be and we don't know what material that that uh you know we don't know the alloy yeah, there's a lot of consideration as of... well as the possibility of some kind of energy disruption field that might have disrupted a cutting beam of some kind and yeah, so you had to use right. short pulses to overcome it. There are a lot of possibilities there. Yeah. Yeah, heat round would be a, a good possibility. Yeah. Or perhaps a weapon that would, say, jam it to where if you tried to activate it, it wouldn't release down the tube if you yeah, had a possibly. weapon. I get like the impression, though, something like this is a very simple yeah. uh, device that is going to rely on gravity. So all you'd have to have is uh, some kind of manual release yeah. as a backup. So you just release the uh, ring and gravity does the rest for you. Yeah. But if you had something, a weapon that could screw up the tracks to where the ring would not 
go down the would not go down the uh, I mean yeah the defense ring wouldn't go down the supply tube in those tracks they maybe screw them up somehow a weapon that could do that perhaps I don't know maybe. you know it could be it was just like a ball bearing type uh, device yes. that it was writing itself writing down on so yeah. it didn't it was just a simple gravity driven device. Yeah, if that's all they had was gravity driven device, that's going to be pretty tough to overcome. I mean, you could blow it up maybe, but very simple, not a yeah. lot to uh, try to mess up on it. Very few moving parts. Yeah. Relatively speaking, any. <laughs> they jam by right. They jam the radar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Only one man would dare give me the raspberry. Yes. But anyway, a combination of these two things, maybe, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't, don't know that for sure. Yeah. And of course, now this is something that they did when they released the ring and they got shot to bits by the plasma weapons, but uh, destroying the supply tube itself. In other words, uh, that ring basically destroyed the supply tube. So it seems to me there was some kind of weapon that they could use that they could, you know, still, you know, cut the supply tubes. And there were, I don't know how many supply tubes there are on there. Is it six or eight? Who knows? If they could destroy all the supply tubes, I mean, just cut well, them. It's 12. It's stated in the manga that there's 11 because some kid is complaining, what, 11? It's a stupid number to have been 10 or 12. And it's explained, well, there used to be 12, but one got cut off, which is what we would, and the scene in the movie with the uh, two being cut off is based on that line from the manga that there used to be 12, but one got cut off. Yeah. So there's presumably 11, although you could just open a screenshot from the movie and count if you want to know. Yeah. But the idea, though, here about destroying the supply tube, if they could destroy all, all the supply tubes that is holding, that's, uh, you know, sending, you know, food and med not maybe not medicine, but food and, and uh, clothes and all kinds of cool stuff up to Zalem, they cut all the supply tubes. Hmm. They could defeat Zalem without, they could just lay, it'd be like laying siege to a city and starve them out. You know, that's... Uh, yeah. Unless they had some kind of uh, food production, like uh, like replicators in Star Trek or something like it that. It could also be there was some kind of time limit they were under that isn't uh, clarified in the uh, movie. Yeah. Either. Like maybe Nova was working on some kind of super defense that they were trying to take him out before he completed it. Yeah. I'm not about to sh sh thing. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> oh crap you know in general when there have these nanobots that are specifically uh, that are specifically used not really nanobots they have the substance that slows down nanobots what if that's something or like the reverse of that is what was keeping uh, berserkers from entering Zalem if the air around Zalem had a specific nanobot cloud that was making the berserker bodies malfunction, so they like they can't function to their full extent. Hmm. That's yeah. possible. Some kind of limiting awesome. field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because the berserkers are a very specific uh, work on berserker cells, they're not like typical cyborgs. Then that wouldn't act if if you coded it right. It wouldn't be fucking up or fully organic cells or normal cyborgs, but it would be pretty inconvenient. But it could be damaging to berserkers, yeah. not damaging Impossible. enough to destroy them outright, maybe, but damaging enough so they'd be worse at fighting. Well, yeah, they're possibly not forcing them to constantly possible to kill in other yeah. ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Hmm. Making them not as effective as a fighting force, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And because it's not like an immediate boom, something's not working, they don't realize they're less effective yeah. until they put themselves in a situation where they could only, which they could only survive if they were as effective as they usually are, which yes. they're not, which is what yeah. got them all killed off. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm afraid. Well, the idea of, su of destroying this. Oh, okay, Lee. Well, thanks yeah. for joining us, man. Well, thanks for having me. It was fun. You bet. You guys take care. Yes. Say hi to your girlfriend for us. I will. All right, man.
Bye. 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 Yeah, the <clears throat> the whole thing Do we about know his girlfriend. Say again, Vladdy. Do we know his girlfriend? Well, I don't know her. I mean, I, I asked him pretty stream how his girlfriend's doing. He, you know. Oh, okay. So it's not. It's not I thought a, she might be part of the fandom or something. No, I no. Well, I think she's seen the movie, but I don't think she's part of the fandom. <laughs> okay. But anyways, so I was going to say, anyway. as I was going to say, destroying the supply tube where it'd be something you do as part of a siege action, that's going to take a long time right there. It's kind of like what you guys were saying. If they're working up against some kind of time limit, that's not going to be a viable strategy, you know. Now, if they don't have a time limit, you know, of any kind, then they, certainly they could, you know, destroy all the supply tubes and starve them out. You know, uh, that's basically the way that would work. So, and then of course we talked about this. Now in the manga, if you remember, <clears throat> there was that big cannon that they had on a rail car. They were going to shoot the, you know, they were going to shoot the, uh, the, the, the space element. Yeah. And uh, of course, that that didn't work I out for them. I think on somewhere the joke that what if Chaos was part of the Barjack all along, and he only split off not because of, of political reasons or because he's a pacifist, but because he got into a fight with them over whether or not Hank should look like some kind of instrument or be named after some kind of type of music. Yeah. Like Hank. Couldn't we have something more symbolic? No, then I'm leaving. So anyway, I don't, oh, go probably ahead. not canon, but it's funny idea. So anyway, by attacking the space elevator itself, you know the the long tube. It's going to be twenty two thousand three hundred miles long. <laughs> there certainly is going to be vulnerabilities in that. But I think it might have been like what Lee was saying, and and a couple of you guys are saying. There might have been some protective energy field, you know, that protects that tube. So it might be very difficult to overcome that shield. So, you know, I'm not sure that, uh, I mean, certainly if you had a weapon powerful enough, then, you know, maybe you can penetrate the shield. But that would, you know, certainly that would have been an, an option. But there might have been a reason why they were going up the tube, uh, the supply tube, like they were doing. We don't know that. They might have picked that for a specific reason. Could have been they were going to capture, uh, I guess, Nova. And if you if you did break the tube itself or bro uh, break the space elevator, bringing Zalem down, crashing it, it might kill Nova. And maybe they didn't want to. Maybe they wanted to capture him. But although I do think uh, Gilda Gilda did say that he is the dragon that must be slain so i guess that's not a a, a viable uh i guess solution either so and then i guess the last thing I, the question I is that was already asked in the previous stream but still important question is killing nova the main business and killing zalem the side mission like we're killing zalem because nova's in it or is destroying zalem the main mission and killing nova is the side quest like we're only destroying killing nova because he's standing in the way of destroying zalem which is the more important uh, goal and which is the uh, means to that end well in a military action like that when when gelda said you know Finish the mission, destroy Zalem. It te that tells me that uh, destroying Zalem was the number one mission. If they and also there's get... the whole dragon that might... okay, that, that could be taken either way. Yeah, but I do think since the mission is to destroy Zalem, maybe killing Nova is a kind of a secondary objective. You know, perhaps if they could kill him, that'd be great, you know. But they do want to bring Zalem down, like they did the other 11 cities, you know. So close to a baker's dozen. Yeah. Well, it was exactly a dozen, but only 11 of the cities came down. So, yeah, one short, unless I'm getting mixed up. What's a baker's dozen again? Isn't that just 12? 13. 13. Oh, crap. All right. Just, yeah. Just and they did not have 13 sky cities. <laughs> Thankfully. No. Yes. They needed to have an even number. <laughs> I they agree with the panel. Like I think twelve is. Guys, I, think. I think twelve is outrageous myself. But you know, anyway. 
it's kind of like in um rise of skywalker when they just had like a million ships coming in just to like be like yeah this movie's gonna like top all the movies we're gonna have a zillion ships yeah well it was kind of like that star trek uh series uh picard when you know looked like picard was gonna get blown up you know by the i guess by the romulans and then all of a sudden a zillion ships show up out of uh, hyperspace you know with uh with uh captain Riker, you know uh, or admiral Riker at that point you know having all of those ships and it's gonna take on the romulans you know and there was a zillion of those ships so yeah i guess <clears throat> Anyway, one other thing I did think of and I mentioned is having some kind of EMP weapon that would disable all of the systems on Zalem. Now, they maybe they have uh, some kind of uh, defensive capability that would shield their systems from EMP. I don't know, you know, but that would have been another possibility that they might have done. They might have attempted that, you know. But can you guys think of any other way the Urm might have could have won the Battle of Zalem? Um, I mean, the I'm best not... option is just slam a big ship into the tube between Zalem and Jeru. Yeah, that could work. That, that would have worked. <laughs> that would be their world equivalent of 9-11, except yeah, 9 worse. that shit. Yeah. Yeah, a big starship, you know, just crashing into the city, right? That That would have done it. Or say crashing into the uh, a big ship crashing into the space elevator. You know that might have done it. Because if you break that space elevator, that city's coming down. You know. And then there'll yeah. be there'll be people in Iron City with conspiracy theories for decades to come. Yeah, those that survive. Like, what really caused the collapse of Zalem? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those few that was um, it. <laughs> Was it gay gay aliens? <laughs> gay aliens. Was it the was it Wi-Fi? There is yeah. gay aliens. Holy moly! <laughs> was uh, it was secret good. parasitic mind controlling brain worms? <laughs> was it Most bug likely. people? Was it lizard people? <laughs> lizard, yeah, lizard people. Oh, yeah. Oh, my my was it my math teacher not giving me an extension? And the stream. And the stream. <laughs> Shut it down. No, not yet, Bonnie. We got a couple of other things to do. <laughs> Getting too close to the truth. <laughs> so can you guys think of anything else? I think we went over like five different things. And of course... They just uh, needed more elitas. Yes. If, they, if every single warrior was elita, they would have won easily. You're thinking like Eisenberg, and that clearly did not work out for him. Let's just make more yes. elitas did not work out for him. No, well. it did not. <laughs> He was doing. He he made twelve, didn't he? Because Elf and Swerve. Yeah, and one of them decided that it's that uh, you know that it's time to kill all the other ones. Well, Zex wanted to kill all the others. I mean, uh, you know, he wanted to do that. He was AR six. Uh, yeah, Gunnar. Uh, Gunnar. There were uh, well, actually, technically. There are twelve android elitas, and uh, in the in the Badlands arc, twelve uh, android elitas and one cyborg elita. So technically, I guess you say it's thirteen elitas. So, uh, yeah, and the AR program is what uh, Bigot Eisenberg wanted. To, uh, he he wanted to pattern, or he wanted to replicate. I guess these twelve ARs, you know, to fight and be as effective as Alita is fighting, you know, except they'd be androids. So So they'd be more obedient and easy and easier to repair if something happens to them. Yeah. Now uh Avernaut says that they had starships and they could have just, you know, nuked it from orbit, which uh they probably could have done that. Now I, I don't recall I, I thought that you know that the uh, that Venus and say Jeru, uh, you know Earth, even Mars at one point or Jupiter had considered interstellar space travel, but they did not. They elected not to do it. Is that right? Does that sound something uh, channeled? That uh, does that from sound what I remember, they they were going. They created generation uh, spaceships that 
could uh, travel between uh, solar systems, but they were considered later too dangerous and the engines had to be disabled. And one of those ships was, uh, I think some of them were destroyed by terrorist attacks. Yeah. And one of some of them were converted to space stations with the yes. engines disassembled. I think like some of those sh ships were destroyed by the uh, Manhoof attack, which Alita was part of. And that's what ended the project and got all the not non-destroyed ships converted into space stations. Well, I could have taken one of those space stations and just like you said, they could have rammed J uh, Zalem. You know, they could have done that. Uh, we don't know what kind of defense system Zalem had, if they could have prevented that. But that seemed to me that would be a heavy lift for any uh, society or any military to stop a big starship or spaceship like that that's coming at you at probably, who knows, 40 kilometers an hour or, or whatever, or uh, more, faster than that, 40,000 kilometers an hour. Uh, that would be tough to take out, you know, before it rammed into the city, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, and certainly they probably, I don't know what kind of weapons they'd have on it, but certainly to me, you know, using a starship or a spaceship like that and attacking it from a distance would be more effective than sending a bunch of soldiers up a supply tube. Uh, you know, I don't know. Any other thoughts, guys? Um, I'm not a military strat strategist, so I don't really know. But we've had some good theories. Yeah. Well, I'm, not a, I'm not a military strategist. Eventually, guys. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm a, not military. a military strategist either, but you can tell by the way I'm talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm not one either, but I was in the Defense Department for many years. I knew a little bit about it, but not enough to be considered an expert strategist. <laughs> So, you know, Smendrick, are you still with us? Yeah. Okay. And now I you were, you were in the German the Wehrmacht, weren't you? Yeah. The, yeah. Um, yeah more in the, the, um, oh man. How do you call this, uh, Mars and Lars, uh, 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 artillery uh, yeah, yeah, rockets yeah, yeah. Uh, systems yes, uh, yes. Um, but um, no I I think there would be a much easier solution for all yeah. of us the best yeah you remember um, 200 years before um, the battle a company called Disney. No, I don't know. Yeah, uh, they should. Yeah, it's 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 not an important company, but if they uh, would have listened to the so-called Alita army <laughs> and sent the sequels and yes. release yeah. and produce and whatever. Um, re-release uh, uh, the movies then um, um, could have uh, learned from these movies yeah, how to won the battle of Salem yeah. if they released those movies then they wouldn't be fighting Salem at all because Nova would still be on Mars re-watching and analyzing those movies Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's right. That's no the famous it. last word. <laughs> and the internet, the internet would stretch between uh, oh, the Earth, Mars, it. Jupiter, and Venus. So you'd have a big ass internet <laughs> with a lot of latency. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I think we hit this one good enough. I think. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to talk about? No, <laughs> no, you're ready. You're ready to get back onto a uh, Discord, aren't you, uh, Bloody? Yeah. No, I'm ready to get oh, you want to go to bed. bed? Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> and I'm an hour before the other two people. Channel, I am going to send you that invite as soon as we get off here. I promise. 
For someone who's in a time zone where it's currently 2 a.m., I'm not even that sleepy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think I'm sleepy because I've been drinking so much caffeine. World peace. Yeah, because you drink if you drink too ca caffeine too often, you actually get kind of immune to it. I know. Except yeah. not really, yeah. because now when you drink caffeine, you feel the same way as you usually used to without drinking caffeine. That's, That's because what caffeine does it numbs the connections in your brain that tell you you're tired. What mm -hmm. your brain does then it creates more connections to tell you you're tired. So now when you don't do you do drink caffeine, you feel the same as before when you didn't drink it. But if you stop drinking caffeine, well now your brain has twice the amount of connections to that say I'm tired. So yeah. until it fixes that, and and you're gonna just be constantly tired because your brain, if if you quit coffee for long enough, your brain will get rid of some of those connections because they're no longer needed. But for a while, you will have twice the amount of connections that to inform you you're tired. And then you have a shit night's sleep because of the caffeine, and then you drink more caffeine the next day because you're still tired because you had a shit night's sleep. <laughs> well, be, well, be careful if you drink too much caffeine, it'll raise your blood pressure too. So you got to be... Oh, gotta, God, yeah. yeah. Uh, everyone <laughs> now has a, a, a good uh, comment here. Yeah. Oh, I love but, coffee. Um, I drink the yeah. heck out of it. <laughs> 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 oh, I love Avernaut's comment here. He says, uh, 200 years. I don't think Disney will be yeah. around another 400 years. They carry on like they are now. Absolutely. I agree. I mean, God almighty, these people are making bad decisions. <laughs> but... Yeah. uh yeah, you're right. Uh, you're right, Avernaut. That's for sure. All right. Well, I guess we can move on then. Uh, <clears throat> did we miss anything? I don't think so, because Vladi wants to go to bed, and uh, <laughs> he doesn't want us to miss anything. Uh, but as you can see from that center panel there, Alita does love her Uncle Creek, and that's because he wants a sequel. And uh, she wants a sequel, and everybody in the elite army wants a sequel. Actually, we want sequels. We don't want a sequel. We want sequels. And it's kind of like uh, Gennar said a while ago, world peace through Alita sequels. Absolutely. Damn right. You're sounding even, right. sounding even more like a cult than usual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, there's our queen right there. Uh, uh, Rosa Salazar, uh, certainly uh, uh, she's number one in the Creeks book in terms of being an actress. I mean, uh, you know, just really, God, she's good at what she does. That's for sure. You know, I, and I think, you know, she should have got some kind of award, you know, for what she, for her portrayal of Alita, I think. That's just my opinion. You know, of course, I'm biased as we all are, but. Uh, she did get Rosa, one award. Yeah, she did, didn't she? Yes, yeah, she did. So uh, I'm hoping to to see her too, you know, in uh, in that play in Los Angeles. That's going to be kind of cool. Mm, that's going to be amazing. Talking. I wish I could oh, see her. Oh yeah, that. yeah, for sure. You know, I wonder yeah, if they'll ever take pictures. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so like, she's going to have a comeback soon. She'll be getting, she'll be at the Imogen Awards. She's got this play coming up. Might be doing some promo for Captain America. She might even be at Comic Con tomorrow. Although I'm not yeah. sure about that. I've got a gut feeling she's not going to be there. Yeah, who knows? I, I wish I wish I could have gone down there. I mean, if I had gone down there, of course, I, I, I wasn't able to do it. But, God, we'd have missed uh, Radio Chaos streams three weeks in a row. <laughs> so I don't know if anybody could have tolerated that. But anyway, there's our queen, Rosa, right there. Really super-duper actress. And I want to give out – I want to give shout-outs to – uh, L. Lamont and Jesse Fisher, they brought Screwhead to life. And uh, certainly all three of these ladies are really good at what they do. They are great professionals. Uh, and we want Screwhead to be in the sequel as well. I want to see, I say this every week, but I want to see Screwhead on Alita's motorball team when she takes on Joshagon, you know, and that's going to be kind of cool. And, of course, that would require both L. and Jesse because Jesse's uh, the the most badass stunt woman ever, as what uh, what the report was. But anyway, also as I say every week, uh, these three are really good at what they are do. That what they do, they're super duper professionals. But it sure don't hurt that they're pretty, because they are. You know. 
Okay, why is this image here? Well, that image is there because I like it, and I'm the producer, and I'm the stream manager, and that's why it's there. And to paraphrase Gruishka, I'm only here for our girl and the Alita Army. And, of course, all of us in the Alita Army are only here for our girl. And that just brings us to one last thing, and that would be our call to action on my count of three. One, two, three. Film those equals baby. Well, that was all over the map, but that's Our okay. timing's so bad now. Your <laughs> countdown's too slow. Yeah, it is. It's no, just, uh, it's, it's low energy. For like... old men like me. That's a good thing yeah. Elle Lamont's here. She'd make us do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, folks, we'll see you next week on the Alita live stream, and we'll see you tomorrow on Radio Chaos. Bye, guys. Yeah, bye bye. bye.